So we are one of the uh, uh, largest manufacturers of satellites in the world. Um, and so we produce the satellites and deliver them to the various operators who provide communications capability uh, all over the world. Uh, what's interesting today is we're going through a uh, thought exercise with our employees as well as with our customers of what is life going to be like in 2025 or 2030 or 2035, right? How are we connected today and what does that connection look like in the future, right? Today, we are connected with our iPhones or our Samsung phones, but what's that going to be in the future? And what sort of bandwidth requirements are there going to be? We're going to be, want, be wanting to be connected 24-7, no matter where we're at. And today, we are a lot in the airplanes, but we're not everywhere globally. Whether we're hiking Mount Everest, whether we're in an airplane, whether in the middle of Colorado, or in the, uh, uh, you know, the middle of Saudi Arabia, right? And so what are those, how are people going to live, and then how are governments going to operate? And you then work that back and say, what are the technologies and capabilities that are going to enable that? The connected airplanes, right? We're working a lot with our commercial airplane counterparts on how do you provide the connected airplanes? How do you provide cost-efficient bandwidth so in 2025 or 2030, people globally can have that connection to what we want, the news, the streaming TV, the movies, whatever it might be. So it's pretty exciting time in the communications industry of what's the future gonna look like and then what technologies today do we need to be maturing to be able to enable that. Will you hire me first to be in Some of the challenges right now is connection, is it by terrestrial means or is it by satellite means, right? And so where originally you think, well, terrestrial is going to be cheaper, you just lay fiber and you can reuse the fiber. Satellites are maybe better over countries like Indonesia with thousands of islands, right? But the economics have been kind of changing where it's becoming extremely expensive through all the areas of Europe or the U.S. to lay fiber through Colorado, through Arizona, through all these places. And satellites are actually becoming extremely cost efficient. So how do the terrestrial folks and the satellite folks work together? Because you know what? As a consumer, do you care how you're getting your connectivity? You don't care. You want to get it if it's by satellite or by terrestrial, you don't care. And so how do we work together from a regulatory standpoint, from a spectrum, from a capability standpoint, to provide how we're going to live and improve our lives in the future. It's kind of a cool time.